Hey, welcome to another, um, I guess you could call this a tutorial. It's not exactly a Playmaker tutorial. It's not a Unity tutorial. It's just kind of a game dev discussion thingy. Maybe a tutorial kind of with GitHub. Um, so I've been doing game development somewhere between two and four years. Maybe it's three years. I can't remember exactly. Um, I've had many little pet projects, um, but I have this one that was based on one of my favorite childhood board games. Um, and I was playing on targeting like all platforms. Star, PC, mobile. I didn't really think about console, but maybe down the road. Um, and um, I started it after it had already been devving for maybe about a year. Um, and I realized, hey, I'm much stronger at development. And so I started tackling it gung-ho. Um, I'd started it much further back, but just kind of gave up on it because I hate world building. And I had to kind of build the whole world myself. Um, so long story short, I've decided to go back to that project, which I hadn't gotten really far with. It's going to be multiplayer. Um, but I decided to scrap all my game logic and start over. And so what that's going to do is give me a chance to plan better. And so I thought it'd be nice to do a little video that shows how to plan for really any project. But this one specifically is planning for a VR, pro uh, not a VR project, but planning for a multiplayer project. So here I am in GitHub. I can't believe how long I did game development without using GitHub, um, and especially using GitHub Desktop to keep my projects backed up. Um, so one thing that's really cool about GitHub is um, the issue. So I've used other tools like Trello to plan, keep track of bugs, and then I found um, a great web app called app.hackandplan.com, which I think I learned about from Jason Whiteman's YouTube channel. I um, loved using that for a while, but since I'm already using GitHub to back up the project, um, I learned that the, the issues tab doesn't have to necessarily be just issues. It's a great way to plan your game. Um, and on top of that, built into the issues tab is the milestones tab, which I kind of wish milestones had its own tab here at the top as well. The milestones tab is where you can plan milestones. So, um, like maybe you have a milestone for create level one. Um, and in that milestone, you can then assign issues to that milestone. And as you complete issues, the milestone gets closer and closer to being completed. So I'm going to try to plan out, and I won't record the entire plan, but I'm going to go through and record my plan for my game. So this is a multiplayer game. This is a board game. Um, so I already have my repo built up. I've already got all my assets and everything here in GitHub. Um, I'm on the Issues tab. I'm going to Milestones. I'm going to create a new milestone. And so this first one, I'm just going to call Player. So boom, there I have a milestone player. Um, it's 0% complete. There's zero open issues, zero closed issues. Um, so now if I wanted to, I can go here into Player, and now I can create some new issues. Or I can even, from the Issues tab, create an issue and assign it to So let's go ahead and create new issue. And let's do um, movement. All right, so I'm just going to call this one movement. Notice it's already assigned to the milestone player. If it was not, I could click on that gear and change it. Um, you can also assign this to people if there's multiple people on your team. You can give it labels like bug, documentation, enhancement, good first issue. I don't do that that much because it's just an extra step. Um, I don't need it. It's just me. I don't need a organization. So um, movement. In, the tough thing about movement is it's pretty rel reliant on the camera when it comes to 3D projects. Uh, I guess it doesn't have to be, but in all my projects, it's pretty reliant on the camera. Um, so I'm going to maybe I'll put movement and camera one issue. Right. So now if I go to issues, my cat is pushing on my laptop screen. Now if I go to milestones, I have player, I have one open. And if I went in and like if I click on player, I can see all the issues just for player. Like if I come in here and mark this as closed, right, there are no open issues to this milestone. The milestone shows 100% complete. If I go to the milestones tab, we can see player is 100% complete. All right, but I'm going to go back in here, go to the closed one, and I'm going to mark as open. All right, so we go back to 
um, the open. Now we can see movement in camera here on player. Um, another thing I need on my player is an inventory system. Right, and then um, another thing I need for my player is uh, so the player's moving around the world and they're going into rooms and exploring, so they need to open doors. So I need that logic on the player. There's and look good, my milestone still set the player. Um, so while my player is going around, they're finding objects in rooms. Um, I want that logic on the player. I think I do this time around. Um, finding objects. So the way this game works is there's good rooms where you can pick up objects. That are good for you, and then there's bad rooms where something bad happens. Um, teleport. Um, I want that logic on the player, though. I don't think so. I want logic. I have a different. I have a a room manager. Um, so what else would I need for my player? So I'm just gonna go back to issues. We have, let's go to milestones. Even though these are all for the player, let's just go to milestones. Right now I'm looking at all issues. Milestones, go to player. So we need movement and camera. We need inventory system. We need open doors. Ah, and because this is multiplayer, I need, look at that, I saved my title. I need turn manager. So I'll have a, uh, I'll have a game object. So with Photon and Pun2, which you didn't know is it's already considered, I think, fabricated. Um, because I think after Pun2, uh, is it called Bolt? Kind of made alongside it, but there's a new thing. Um, I'm sure Pun2 will still be around for a very long time. Oh, and just fun facts. Um, so what I'll probably do is the first time I made this game, I had a turn manager that was just in the scene. What I think I'll do now to make it less complicated is when the player's turn is over, they will broadcast an RPC to the next player. Um, so whenever you are broadcasting RPCs, you don't have like a lot of control over it with Playmaker. You might have more control over it with C Sharp. Um, but with Playmaker, you can't like target a specific game object or a specific FSM, but you can target players based on reference. So it can be their nickname, it can be their actor number. Um, so I should be able to get the current player's actor number, send the RPC to the next player's actor. In fact, I think in the player reference box on broadcasting a RPC to player, you can choose next player. Um, and so that's really clever because you don't need to know your actor number. Um, you don't need to know how many actors are in the room. It's just going to find the next one. So if you're a player four, it should loop back to player one, I think. <laughs> all right. Um, so if we go back to issues, these are all just my player issues. So I have a turn manager, opening doors, inventory system, movements, camera. So at some point there, um, you can attack other players and you can attack this boss that's on the space station um but remember this is based on a board game so it's not typical combat it's it's not even what i would consider it's kind of turn-based combat but but not exactly um so i probably need to have some type of attacking manager on the player so the player can only attack the boss when they find the boss and they have um, all the items they need to defend. Ah, oh, but attacking, 
attacking bot. Do I want that as the same game logic? Attacking. Sure. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do a new issue. And attacking manager. Go on the player miles. Now, something else I need is what if my player is getting attacked by someone else? I need some sort of defense manager. I'm glad I'm doing it this way because I had, this is going to make it a lot simpler than how I had programmed it originally. We're just going to do a new one. We're just going to do a defense. All right, so this is just me planning out my game. So far, I only have one milestone, and it's my player. In my player, I have movement and camera I want to take care of, the inventory system, opening doors, turn manager, attacking manager, defense. Um, now, I don't really need to think about um, art um, because I already have all that figured. <coughs> I'm using um, some assets, already built the world. Um, I pre-built the player already the first time I attempted building this game. Um, I'm just changing all the logic. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, player. So let's go and make a new milestone. And uh, this is a milestone for all this thing. I called it drone. Like that. Um, I think I even had the acronym stamp or something, but I can't remember what it was. All right, I'm sure some of you already shut off this video by now because it's not super exciting. Um, but some of you might find it interesting how one may plan a game, especially. So I have this drone, and it's actually an item that the player can pick up. And it's almost like giving the player another turn. It's another character the player can control. Um, so I need uh, camera and movement. I need this drone camera. Ooh, and look at this. The milestone is not set properly, so let's come over here. Set this to drone, submit new issue. All right, so if I go to the issues tab, um, see all my issues are here. But if I go to milestones, I can see I have six open on the player. I have one open on the drone. And if I click on drone, there is the one issue that I have created. All right, so... um. My drone, camera, and movement. And then we need, what else does the drone need? We need, uh, uh, I need, uh, let's call this drone teleportation manager, I guess. I need to put one of these on the player too. Copy that title. Issue. I'm going to just call this play teleportation manager and let's put this on the milestone. Um, I'm gonna go back to my issues list. Um, I'm gonna look at the milestones, go to player, movement and camera, inventory system, opening doors. Okay, I do have opening doors there. I need uh, open doors for drone. So that drone open doors and let's set the milestone to the drone all right we have drone opening doors i don't think that my my drone does anything else um he doesn't need an inventory system because any inventory he picks up goes to the player um do i need to have a manager though for whenever he enters a room for him to send the inventories he finds to um you know, the drone can't attack. Sorry, I went off interpretation, but the drone can defend. So I need um a drone defense manager. Um so if the drone gets an item, um it's gonna need some type of manager to handle if an item is received. So, um, do a new issue. 
for this drone. Um, item seat. All right. Issues, milestones. So we have the drone and we have the player. I don't think I've need anything else for either. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the scene itself. So the scene is a station, um, a space station with lots of rooms. I don't know if you can hear my baby, but he was completely silent while I was paused and not recording. Or zoom the recording and now he's bouncing his jumper. All right, so now we need our rooms manager. Um, and then inside the rooms manager, because it's going to be a game object in the scene that just manages all the rooms. Um, we need to uh, randomly create good and bad rooms on the room. And then one of the rooms is going to have um, the bad guy in it. So we'll do a new issue and then randomly set bad guy call him Are you on rooms uh, uh, so my rooms also need to know what cards are needed um but that can just be on the room itself. So, um, wish you, I need key card logic on each room. And then I need, uh, I need item discovery logic on each room. Um, senses, player, or drone, and sense item. Okay. So, here are my player, I'm my drone, I'm my rooms manager. So I have my virus. My virus is my bad guy, right? So do I need a manager for him or do I just put the logic on the players themselves? If I put the logic onto him, I could basically uh, create a prefab that gets instantiated in whatever room he's created in. And it would have like trigger on it. But not all the rooms are the same size. Tough where to put the trigger. Um, yeah, I don't think I need logic for my virus. So I think I'm gonna stop the video here because this is going to give me a lot of work. Um, and this is the majority of the game. Just these three simple milestones. Now, if you're starting the game from scratch, um, you'll have different milestones like uh, level one, level two, level three, level four, potentially, um, or just building the world. And then inside those milestones, you'll have the different things that you need. I need the, I need the train. I need a lake. I need the sky. I need a skybox. I need lighting. Those will all be built into those. And then... Um, now you can't assign a milestone to an individual, okay? But you can assign uh, issues to an individual, all right? Um, but you can also, like, if you wanted to assign all the issues in a milestone to an individual, you can just check them all. You can just assign, and if you have somebody that's assigned to this repo, um, I can just go like that, and we should be good, right? Ta -da, it's all assigned to me, okay? Um, I'm assigned to me. Okay, so I hope this was useful. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, trying to hit that 1,000 subscriber milestone. I recently put a poll 
um, on the channel for what types of tutorials you want to see next. I know this wasn't a tutorial, but I hope it helps some folks who are looking at how to plan their game. Um, also, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a tutorial on how I use GitHub Desktop and managing um, backing up my projects. Um, also, down the road, I plan on doing a tutorial on how I use GitHub Desktop and Unity is it Plus that I'm using with Cloud Build to build games to iOS without needing a Mac, kind of. Okay, so um, until next time, thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, feel free to join my Discord channel, a link in the description, and we can chat live. We'll talk to you later.